Here we are, South by Southwest 2022 continues, and this next one is a big one. The action adventure romantic comedy, The Lost City, produced by and starring Sandra Bullock. We're gonna hear from Sandra right now, along with Daniel Radcliffe and the filmmakers on the red carpet. festival to possibly premiere this film at because the fans are big and loud and love movies and love a good time. It's Austin after all. I drive up and down these streets a lot and I see other people having premieres and it's just nice to be at one myself. I mean it's like honestly it's it's the biggest sort of feeling film that I've done since Potter. Us, when we read this, we were like, this is the movie I want to see in theaters. And so the thing that we really responded to also was like the hearkening back to like a Romancing the Stone or a Raiders where that's shot in a real place. And so bringing the cast out there and putting them in these tough situations, I think gave it this grounded sense of reality that only helped the comedy grow. It is such a joy to be writing for someone who you know will not only take the material and elevate it, but is like so beloved by people. A lot of actors have like vanity producer credit where they don't really do anything. Sandra was literally doing stunt sequences in the water, being pulled out of the water by the stunt crew, getting onto the boat, and then like scheduling marketing meetings. It was very, very impressive to, to watch. The guys get to do it. And I just wondered why the girls never got to do it, except for as the wife or the girlfriend role. And I'm, I'm not the wife or the girlfriend in this. I'm just happy that I could do it while I could still do it. You know, what if it came along 10 years from now, my body could no longer do it? Then I'd be really bummed. It's gonna be the whole package of what you go to a movie for. You've got the adventure and the comedy and the romance, and it's just a big sweeping cinema. Thank you so much. What a great time. This was, so, and how was it for you, watching it? Uh, it was amazing to watch it with this audience. You guys were a terrific audience. It was, it was fun. There were some things that, in that movie that we haven't seen with an audience, so it was very, very uh, fun to listen to you guys scream at butts and Brad Pitt dying. This is the first film I've seen in any cinema in two years, so this has been great. And it's the first time I've seen it, and I, so it was lovely to watch it with you. You're a lovely audience, thank you. <laughs> um, no, it was, it was the first time we've seen it with an audience, and our score, Pinar, who did our score, just, it, all the things came together in a way we hadn't even seen yet. Everything was Zoom, everything was virtual, everything was, you know, in little cubes, and you just had to pray, and seeing it in a theater just reminds you of why we love the theater. What was funny for us was that a lot of, in terms of submissions, a lot of the COVID, the, what, the COVID effect was that there were films that took place in a remote location with a, a, a contained cast and a crime. <laughs> and it was like variations on the theme to see how beautifully and exciting and differently everybody could do it. This is a similar, it's like you get your four best friends, go to the jungle with a video camera. <laughs> uh, it's one of those movies. Well, the cast is, you know, remarkable. I mean, the, the chemistry, they're fantastic. So how did that, how did you figure that out? How did it come about? Sandra was great in the audition. She, had, she prepared a song. Um, she just wanted it, and, uh, and, and we like building careers, you know? We like giving, giving young people a chance in Hollywood. Um, uh, actually, so Sandy and Liza came to us, and, uh, and uh, we, we first met with them, so Sandy was attached to be in the movie. And then, in terms of casting, when you do have Sandy as your star and as your producer, it's, it's uh, easy to get people to take the meeting, I guess I would say. So we were very fortunate and got all of our top choices. And we were also willing to pay. So we paid yeah. really good money yeah. to the actors <laughs> because we were saying, come make a movie during a pandemic, put your life in our hands and we will pay you. And they showed up. It was, it was amazing. I mean, he's still alive. You're good, right? Yep, I'm here. Channing, however, is not here, but... Channing, he's, he's, he's not alive. He's safe, though. He, he is safe. <laughs> Channing is still in the jungle. Yeah. Yes. We left him there with Brad. Uh, there are a lot of us out here who are fans of romance, fans of adventure. Um, I wonder in, in what is next for the five of you, what things you would like to tackle. Uh, Dan, I know that you've got a production of Merrily We Roll Along coming up. <laughs> well, yes, I'm doing the musical, as you said. That's very scary, but very exciting. Um, and I also just, I, I just finished playing Weird Al, which is also a dream. So. <laughs> I'd like to shoot movies in cities without <laughs> spiders and bugs I like I've never seen in my whole life and all in the daylight. 
I don't want to be in the dark ever again and with bugs. And no more caves, for sure. Uh, we're going to go make a Masters of the Universe movie. Um, but I feel like this movie has totally spoiled us um, in terms of cast and the whole thing. It's going to be hard to... To match. When they do Masters of the Universe, somebody come back and ask them if we were better. And I am just going to take some time to be a mom. Yeah. <laughs> so it looks like so much fun. And so, is it fun? Uh, you know what? Being collaborative with other human beings who you respect and admire, and, and we get to do this. We get to do our art, and we get to have a studio fund it, and we get to have some trust. Paramount's in here, you didn't trust us completely, but you yeah. trusted us kind of. We get to do this. You can't complain. There's so much going on in the world where they should be complaining. We get to make art, we get to make joy, and um, we had joy uh, for three months in a jungle. Um, the jumpsuit. It's, it's a part of me now. <laughs> it's still embedded in body parts, but I will have it with me for the rest of my life. And when it, the sun hits that part and it reflects a little purple hue, I will think of extraordinary people I got to make memories with and my children got to come with. And um, you know, it's, it's sort of like a rebirth. You come out of this thing and you go, we're still here and we're very blessed and we live in a place that is, is um, Pretty extraordinary. My question is for Sandra. I apologize for this question in advance, but which scene did, of, that includes leeches did you like more? This or Speed 2? <laughs> a deep cut. That's a hard one. Um, look, both of them had their pros and cons, you know. Um, I'm a committed actor. Uh, whether it be on a very slow boat, towards an island where we could have jumped off, or digging things out of Channing's ass. Uh, I would say that the dig with Chan is one that I would do over and over again. So I would say that. Um, Ms. Bullock, I'm pretty sure your movies got me through the pandemic, so thank you. Um, quick question for all of you. If you found a lost city, what's the treasure you would hope you would find? I guess love. <laughs> My 30s. <laughs> my 20s i have no idea i'm just i'm not i can't even think of something clever or interesting but i'm going to think of this because i will get this question again so thank you for flagging that i found the treasure i was looking for Aww. hi i just wanted to ask about the casting of the role of jack trainer uh, since that's a part that i think sort of plays off of the notoriety of the actor in the role. Were there any other performers ever considered for that part or was it always going to be Brad Pitt? We went through a whole litany of people. He was like the eighth choice. <laughs> we talked about Brad initially and then said, that's never gonna happen. That, and so we didn't go out to him initially because it felt ridiculous. And then Sandy worked with him on Bullet Train and somehow in just like chatting. We know how that happened. <laughs> He and I both have the same hairdresser, and she told him to do my movie, and she told me to do his movie, and that is, on, honest to God's truth, exactly how it happened. I thought Sandra and uh, Channing had such great chemistry with funny lines. My question is, uh, how much of that was scripted? How much room was there for some ad-libbing? You know, the movie, uh, Dana Fox and Oren, the, the writers who are here tonight, are here tonight. Um, wrote, wrote an incredibly funny script, and, uh, we had actors that are great at doing the script and then playing and building off of it. And Aaron and I will shout ideas in the middle of a scene, which is super annoying to actors. Um, but I think there was like, it was kind of a little bit of everything, really. What would you say? I agree. I mean, what was so much fun is that you knew once we got the brilliant words that were already written, you would be, as it was day two on your knees, um, just being given lines to speak to a, a penis. And it was amazing because each line was better than the next and longer. So I had to really focus and make eye contact and just be there. And they are brilliant. I mean, and I'm all joking aside, the, the lines that would come out of their mouths were so good. Um, we could have had two or three versions of the film based on the lines that came out of there. So it was, it was a joy. I was just going to say there's a 27 minute cut of the film that is just you talking to the penis. Like there's, like we, that exists. Yeah, it's, it's I'm, I'm really good in that. It started as Adam and I thought, thought we were doing a practical joke. We were just like, say this, now say this. And then she kept saying it and then it all ended up in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I love uh, how the offhand comment at the beginning of the film, um, you're only going to have to wear this for two hours, and then you end up wearing it for the whole fucking movie. Uh, out of everything hilarious that you had to deal with on a daily basis, what was the hardest to kind of keep it together on set? They did not keep it together on set, let's be clear. <laughs> I mean, I'll take that. that they, the joy of sitting on this set was all of the spit takes and laughter that Ruin takes because the cast was just, you know, it was gold. It was amazing. Nothing makes me happier than making Liza laugh. I mean, we were in the trenches from the very beginning and we're very A-type and very bitchy and very bossy. And nothing just... made me happier than to have Liza, who's always got this stern face behind the monitor, and I get to go, I get to produce and get to run and be the actress. Nothing brought me greater joy than making her laugh. You're opposite Channing, who's hysterical. You have Daniel, you have Davine, you have Patty, you have Oscar. But you have people like that, and you just sit down and you let them run, and it's, it's, a, it's a, again, it's joy. So my question is, if you were to play any other character, like, who would you be? I think I'm a shoo-in for Trina. <laughs> <laughs> a leech? <laughs> Once again, I want to be in Channing's butt. I don't know why. Uh, I like them all. I, but I, Oscar. Oscar Nunez. I'm sorry. I just, his delivery, his cadence, he could read the phone book. And he's just so loving and innocent. I think if I could do what he can do, I, I, that's who I would want to play. Hi. Hysterical. I absolutely loved it. Thank you all. Um, Daniel, I wanted to ask you, after playing an iconic hero for so long, what was it like playing into an antagonist character? It, it was incredibly fun. I mean, to, he's, you know, he is obviously kind of amoral and, and a terrible person, but he's also like so desperate to be liked even by the people that he's kidnapping that there's something sort of endearingly pathetic about him as well. Um, so yeah, it was, it was incredible fun and to get to work with Sandy and Channing and just to like be a part of this movie was, was gen you know, the word we keep using is joy, but like it really, really was. So you're one of the biggest reasons for George Lopez's success, especially with the George Lopez show and that actually did a lot for the Hispanic and Chicano communities. I'm just curious to know if Fortis Film or you, you know, as a producer, will provide more opportunities for the Hispanic communities. God, yes. Um, I, I don't look at it as separate communities, we're all one. And George made his career because he was brave enough to share his life story. He's talent. Our whole crew is talent. Um, I, I love stories that show the imperfection of love within families and communities, and that's all of us. And I would love to. Um, when I'm done being a mom, I'll get back to it. Uh, uh, I don't know when that's gonna happen, probably when they're teenagers, like really solidly in like 16, 17 year olds, and I'll wanna like get back to work. Um, <laughs> but it was, it was such a joy doing the show with George and our crew and our writers and the, and the cast and the community. Um, it just, you know, here I was, this white woman who fell in love with this comedian, and it, it gave me such insight, and I, I grew, and I just, it was amazing. It was amazing. I was lucky. I was lucky to be a part of it, and I would, it, I'd be honored to be a part of it again. Well, thank you. This was, this was amazing for us to be able to premiere this. This was so much fun. Thank you for bringing joy to us. Um, thank you for all coming and enjoying it with us. This was what a great experience. Thank you. Thank you, Janet. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Thank you. Thank you.